solution, uh, solution formation. And we have to get this lab going x plus. There is no question we have to get it cranked up. All right, energies of solution formation. All right, so we're going to separate the solute into its individual components. Overcoming intermolecular forces. All right, let's just talk about this. All right, so these are the forces that hold molecules together. And you have learned about these. You have dipole, dipole. You have, one, you have dispersion. Ion, dipole, there's many of them. I'm not going to go into detail about each one of them. It's a two-day lecture, and it's not today. But those are the things that are holding those together. This also allows the solute and solvent to interact to form the solution. All we need to know is that the enthalpy of the solution is all of each part of the solution added up. So whatever we add up. And what does that look like to you? That may look like Hess's Law to you. Right? Anybody remember doing Hess's Law problem? Okay? Some of you, that's too bad if you don't. But the, the biggest thing is adding those three things up. It's Maybe, just maybe, that can be broken down into two steps, all right? Maybe you have step one where you need to expand it, all right? So you have this diagram. Check the diagram on your paper. See that diagram? Yes? H3 dot, dot, dot. It could be H4. It could be, you know, whatever it may be. It could be H5, 6, 7, 8. It doesn't matter. Um, so you take a look at the steps in the dissolving process. Let's say you have a solute. You need to expand the solute. Give you an idea of what's happening in this first step right here. What could be happening? Uh, I'll probably say you're heating it. So it's either a slow-moving gas, it's a solid going to a liquid, something like that. Expand the solvent. When those two mix, that's step three. You add them all together. You make a solution. Or you have the two to begin with, merge them all, slam them together under high pressure, high temperature, and you add up all those heats, those delta H's. All right? That's pretty easy. I think I have a question about that. I need to go over. But this is important. All right? Tables that I go over in class, very important multiple choice type questions. Energy terms for various types of solutes. Solve vents. Take a look at that table. Next page. Some of you have some things highlighted on that. Check it out. That table is critical, crucial. I mean, a lot of these tables are just multiple choice busters or point gainers. So if you have a polar solvent and a polar solute, and they all have large delta H values, an example. Uh, you have water and uh, let's say maybe methane because it's mostly polar in that some type of alcohol with a large delta H. H3 is a large negative. H of solution is going to be small for solution form. You need to know if you're going to have solution forms or not. So what can you tell me about looking at all of these when solutions will form and when they won't? What are we going to look for for our delta H of solution value? You and your partner talk about it for a second. Figure out when solution forms and when they don't.
Okay. Sounds like we have some answers. When do you think relating it to enthalpy of the solution? When the delta H of the solution is what? Not the same. No, no, no. Small. So the number, the numeric value is small. Now, it ties in, it ties in with our likes to solve like stuff, but if you don't, if you're given a number, or you're given numbers in a problem, it says, which one of these is going to form a solution? Large, positive ones don't form solutions. Large, positive numbers. No solutions. That means they have the, they both require a lot of coaxing to make a solution. It's kind of like when I take like 120 grams of sugar and I put it into a 12 ounce can of Coke and then you drink it. It's not easy to do it and you must put it under high pressure and bubble in some gas. Does that have anything to do with the orange juice and milk? It's not usually my favorite drink. Well, that's because I'll tell you why you didn't feel good. This is what was happening in your stomach. It was heating up. You're creating a lot of salt and a lot of water because the acid was mixing with the base. There's a neutralization reaction going on in your stomach. Milk, unfortunately, is basic, yes. Um, now, the next question was, determine whether liquid hexane, C6H14, right, so some of you got some questions on this, or liquid methanol, C3CH3OH, methane is CH4. Always remember, we always like to do that as a review all year, just the same as we always do our Nomenclature. Now we should know methane, like just by looking at it. methane is CH4. Is a more appropriate solvent for substances of grease? Right? Grease. I love me some grease. I love going to Cheeburger, Cheeburger, baby. Get some grease. And potassium iodide. Right? So which one of those is going to be? The first thing we need to know is what is hexane? Polar or nonpolar? It is nonpolar. Why is it nonpolar? Because it contains CH bonds. All right? If you have strictly a hydrocarbon, this means hydrocarbon. They are always going to be nonpolar. Oh, you, you in part two, you'd have to explain it yet. No, you don't have to show anything. This is no show. This is no show. All right, thus. Uh, which will make the best one, all right? Thus, blind, uh, what's going to work? What's it going to dissolve? Jibri, what's this going to dissolve? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Was I was I interrupting? I apologize. I was interrupting. I give you a hint. Likes. Dissolve the likes. Do we have any other hydrocarbons on the board? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> okay. This is a 
a hydrocarbon. It has carbon and hydrogen. So hexane will dissolve. Okay? You should be able to do that from here on out. Figure out one floor and on floor. Next, methanol has an OH group. As a hydroxyl group automatically makes it polar. Right? Auto makes it automatically makes it polar because it's creating an uneven distribution of charge. Any O has more electronegativity than its counterpart. Um, so what does that mean? What's it gonna dissolve? Well, it's gonna dissolve something polar or or ionic. Ki is ionic. It's a metal and non-metal. All right? Polars dissolve not ionics. Polars dissolve polar and ionic. So I always remember that by saying to me, H2O is polar. What happens to salt in water? That's how I remember it. Salt dissolves. Salt is ionic. I'm just giving you my thought process. All right? It dissolves. From there, that makes this going to dissolve that. Okay, not done yet. We have a couple minutes. We have a couple minutes. So this, this is your executive. It's a really tough exit ticket. No. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 